So, Faz, the, um, the the fight against Jeff Sessions as attorney general, I mean, uh, many of these uh, confirmation fights um, were foregone conclusions. And certainly the 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 big question has been and there may be some where the, the Democrats ultimately prevail. Uh, but the big question is, is how much has. A, the Democrats slowed the the process of approval and B, started these nominees off on notice and raised a level of awareness in the country about what is problematic about these nominees, particularly when it comes to Jeff Sessions. Well, Sam, I think what you saw this week is Democrats starting to grow a little bit more of a spine on this issue. The problem is until this week was that we had too many Democrats willing to vote for and pass nominees in the simplest and easiest fashion. So, for instance, we already had a Homeland Security Secretary. We already had a Pentagon uh, Secretary. We already had a a CIA director who all passed through very quickly. And so when the Muslim ban occurred, the Democrats were at a loss for leverage. And I think they were out of stuff out of step with where the country was, which is they wanted a a resistance movement to Donald Trump. And here the Democrats were just kind of merry, merry along, you know, passing these nominees. And finally, we've, I think they've, they've asserted some spine and slowing down the process, making Republicans have to uh, go through every procedural step, take their time, and use their leverage to build uh, leverage over the nominees to drive a conversation about the substantive issues at play, namely uh, the um, Muslim ban. I think you know they did a great job of of of, of finally making Jeff Sessions the point, uh, the, the kind of face to that movement. And I mean, there's I mean, just to expand on this. I mean, you know, this idea of and this was something that was very important during the Bush years. And I think I don't know if the Democrats, frankly, ever really learned that lesson. And it seems like uh, they're learning it uh, quicker this time around. Part of it may be that uh, this is an extremely unpopular president relative to other presidents in their first week of in office. Um But they are learning that they can lose well, right? That there's a value even in losing a fight, but that the value is in engaging it because of those reasons you just listed. That's right. And I think uh, let's not undercount the fact that the uh, thousands of people at airports across the country standing for immigrants, the millions of women at the Women's March, the people gathering at Bernie Sanders' rallies uh, to uh, against uh, uh, the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, the people standing with, at immigration rallies, all of those uh, physical activities of people marching in the streets, protesting, raising their voices, standing outside of in Rhode Island, outside of uh, Sheldon White House's town hall. All of those activities are sending a message to the Democrats that you're a bit out of step with where we are. We want a we want a resistance, and you and you've been too cozy with these guys, just playing along as if as if we had a normal. Uh, a well-functioning Republican government or something. And and that's not the case. We have a radical tyrant in charge, an authoritarian in charge. And we need to start acting that way. Uh, We saw this week that Steve Bannon basically has made himself, you know, the the puppet master of the government, uh, empowered himself to call the shots. And who's going to be the person who's going to who's going to go and raise a fuss about it and and I think um we're we're certainly calling on as much attention as we can at the ACLU to these concerns but we are ultimately going to need political leaders to step up and fight all right so let's talk specifically about Jeff Sessions i mean the uh this muslim ban opened the door uh, and and we'll talk more about the ban in 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 the next uh, uh segment because i want to break that down and get your perspective on on the actual uh, ban itself. But in terms of sort of the, I guess, the meta story, there's a couple of things that are clear. I mean, this, uh, based upon the the shock that both members of Congress, apparently, who were not um, in any way 
uh, informed of this upcoming uh, ban. And even members of Trump's existing cabinet that deal with issues of national security, the Department of Homeland Security uh, secretary had to come out and basically pretend that, that he knew about it this week. Um, it's clear. I mean, it was the Keystone Cops operation over there. I, you know, to, it, it was highly incompetent. There's two parts of it. They were highly incompetent at trying to drive a terrible thing, right? Like, they just didn't even know how to do it. The other part of the, that, though, Sam, is that um, they they intentionally want to try to stomp out voices of dissent, you know, we at the ACLU think dissent is patriotic. And inside the government, I've worked in the government, if you if you are a dissenter, there's usually a mechanism and a process by which your dissent can be aired. I mean, in many of these agencies, we have a, an inspector general. Uh, even in the, in the intelligence process, in, uh, dissenting voices are aired in the document that's presented to chief policymakers. So there's usually a process by which dissent comes about. But this administration, both in their, like, is, is operating with great uh, incompetence so far, but is also trying intentionally to stomp out people who they deem to be uh, not on their team. They generally have a distrust for the expert civil servants around and are trying to quash them. Uh, and they just kind of haven't figured out how to do that the right way. So, you know, what we saw this week is a lot of backfiring from Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, who realized that, you know, they're not going to go along with this uh, clown show. Uh, and, and and they can inflict pain onto Donald Trump if he decides that he wants to be the authoritarian and, and follow his authoritarian um, impulses. How, how important was what Sally Yates, she was the acting um, uh, attorney general, uh, former deputy attorney general, now former acting attorney general, uh, when she announced that she would uh, not defend these cases uh, or that the Department of Justice would not. How important was that? I mean, both in terms of how it played out with Sessions and in terms of the message it sends to those career attorneys in the Department of Justice. Incredible profile and courage from Sally Yates. She didn't have to do that. She could have retired from the position comfortably and gone on to get a good job at a law firm. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to send a bold message uh, and stand for the many voices. I'm sure there are many, many voices both inside the Justice Department who are top-notch legal scholars who understand the Constitution, who understand the law, uh, and who didn't want their own reputations to be tarred by the activities of Donald Trump and Stephen Smith and Stephen Bannon or Stephen Miller or whoever, whoever around him trying to, trying to push through these unconstitutional actions. They just didn't want their own reputations to be tarred by those folks. And she had an opportunity to speak out on behalf of them, and she took it. And she got fired for it. Uh, God bless her. She's, you know, uh, I think will go down as a, a wonderful uh, voice um, and hopefully inspire other people inside the government to take similar action if they feel like they, you know, that, that, the, the, that the process of dissent isn't working properly in this administration. And uh, knowingly or, 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 or unknowingly also, uh, because of a question that was asked to her by Jeff Sessions, when she was getting confirmed as deputy, uh, deputy uh, attorney general, um, she uh, r sort of, I guess, inadvertently raised the question of Jeff Sessions' independence as to whether <laughs> or not he would uh, be independent from Donald Trump. 